various forms of dementia, can they be seen through MRI or through CT or any of that kind of stuff? And, and if so, it's like, what, what is it that you're seeing? Yeah. So an MRI scan is, or a CT scan, either one, is absolutely essential for the diagnosis of uh, uh, memory loss and other symptoms of dementia. And the main thing we're looking for on these brain scans are things that would lead us down a different path. So someone might come in with memory loss, and this certainly happens in my clinic, and it turns out they have a brain tumor. And that, of course, you know, would be treated you know, by, by the surgeons. And the most common brain tumor is benign. So it's a lump in the brain, and it may need to be removed, but it's not cancerous. So, you know, people shouldn't be afraid that they might find a brain tumor as the cause of their memory loss. They should hope that they can find it because if it can be removed, then their memory can get better or at least not get any worse. Um, There are other things that we're looking for on the brain scan that are very treatable. Sometimes there's too much fluid inside the head, and we call that hydrocephalus, which simply means waterhead. And um, if that's the case, there are procedures to help to drain the fluid so that, again, people don't get worse uh, over time and they get somewhat better. Um, And we're also looking for other sorts of unusual sort of surprises in the brain. Now, in terms of actually looking for the cause of dementia, you can see strokes on the MRI scan and the CAT scan. And so sometimes you can make a diagnosis of a vascular dementia by looking at the scans and seeing the strokes. MRI scans are particularly good for being able to see the strokes. The other types of dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease or, say, frontotemporal dementia, you're looking for shrinkage in certain parts of the brain. So Alzheimer's causes shrinkage of a structure called the hippocampus, which is deep in the temporal lobe. So if people put their fingers on their temples, you know, just behind their eyes, it's deep in there. Um, The outer part of the temporal lobes in the same region, but on the outer part, that also shrinks up and the parietal lobes shrink up. The parietal lobes are the top Uh, back uh, of the brain. And um, so we look to see if there's shrinkage in those uh, regions. Now, I'll just mention briefly, uh, the hippocampus is what forms new memories, which is why people have difficulty uh, when they have Alzheimer's in forming new memories. The outer part of the temporal lobe is involved with words and the meaning of words, which is why people with Alzheimer's have difficulty finding words. And the parietal lobes is in charge of visuospatial function as well as in charge of attention, which is why people with Alzheimer's have difficulty getting lost even on familiar routes and also why they have difficulty paying attention due to that parietal damage. Now, there's other disorders that could also cause shrinkage of those parts of the brain. And sometimes they even shrink up as part of normal aging. So we cannot diagnose Alzheimer's disease by just looking at a brain scan. Uh, In frontotemporal dementia, it's mainly the frontal lobes right behind the forehead that shrink up. But again, other things can cause the frontal lobes to shrink up, including, for example, alcohol use. Um, So we cannot diagnose frontotemporal dementia just by looking at uh, an MRI scan. So the MRI scan or the CAT scan is really important and something that absolutely needs to be done, and it can suggest a diagnosis, but it can't be conclusive of that diagnosis. Hey folks, connecting with your benefits is our primary mission, and the SITREP is providing more options than ever. Subscribe to our free email newsletter, subscribe to our audio podcast channel, or subscribe to our content on YouTube. For details and links, check out the description below.